Hello Internet, Redbird here, and welcome back to Life is Strange Before the Storm. And we're about to start Episode 3. Things got really crazy at the end of Episode 2, so let's start that now. I want to tell you all of it. But are you sure that Chloe should be here for- Chloe stays. Of course. In every way that matters, Rose is my wife and your mother. But the woman you saw at the Overlook, her name is Sarah, your birth mother. I'm going to tell you everything, Rachel. Everything I've shielded you from for so long. But the truth can be hard to look at. Is this really something you're ready for? Chloe, I'm right here. Good. I need you. I love the viewfinder motif of uh, James and Sarah's backstory here. When I was in high school, there was one person everyone adored. Her teachers, her friends. Sarah was everyone's favorite. Every boy wanted to date her. I could barely believe it when she picked me. Sometimes, I think that's what kept me blind for so long. She was so beautiful, just like you. She was so alive, so passionate about everything. Early on, though, I realized I wasn't enough for her. while the rest of us were pursuing college, careers, families. Sarah wasn't looking for any of that. She was looking for escape. I only saw what I wanted to see until it was almost too late. Sarah became pregnant, I thought it would solve everything. And it did. For a little while. Becoming your father was the greatest moment of my life. There was so much love, but I was still blind. This all feels like someone else's life. Whatever happens, Rachel, I'm here. However much she loved you then, it wasn't enough. For Sarah, the need to escape was always there. For over a year, I tried to help her. I made myself believe that she was still a good person. That no matter what happened, she would never do anything to hurt you.
was wrong. Eventually, I saw her for who she really was. A destructive person. Someone who could never be satisfied. Anyone or anything. Even the love of her own daughter. I was desperate. I didn't know what to do. So I made a choice. I was never going to let her harm you again. What you saw at the Overlook, Rachel, it was true, we kissed. It was the saddest kiss of my life. It was a kiss goodbye. I told her that I was happy for her. That she felt like she'd gotten her life together. Finally. But she didn't get to just decide one day to be a mother. Not after what she'd done. But after all the people she hurt. All the lives she destroyed. I told her she'd been given the greatest gift in the world. The chance to be your mother. And she squandered it. It pained me to hurt her like that. But I'd do it again. And again and again, to keep you safe. Whoever wrote that must really love the word squander. So that was the first time you've seen her or spoken with her in 15 years? No. I send her money. Every single month. It's our arrangement. But now she wants to see me? Yes, but Rachel, it cannot be. Why not, if that's what Rachel wants? Drug addiction is a disease. It afflicts everyone, not just the addict. I will not allow you to be victimized by her disease again. Even if that's true, Rachel could still meet her. And maybe the, the fact that she wants to see me means she's gotten better. Maybe so. But consider that for 15 years, she's preferred that money to you. <sighs> Rachel... <sighs> I think I need to lie down. Hard to argue that Rachel would have had a better life with Sarah. But does that make what James did right? The Tempest show feels so far away now. This is so painful to look at. I hope tonight hasn't messed up Rachel's memories of family trips like this. Whoa. Sarah Gearhart is a known associate of that psycho who attacked Drew. Then again, so is Frank. Can't 
can't believe I was feeling goofy enough to draw that just a few hours ago. Hey, Mrs. Amber. I think it's Rose at this point, considering everything. Okay, Rose. Do you need any help with anything? That's very kind of you. Could you get out the broom for me? It's in the breezeway, door to the left of the fridge. All right, let's get this broom. Hey, cool graphic. Rachel was really getting rid of this. Take that shirt. Mrs. Amber, could I have this? Oh, sure, Chloe. Rachel was going to give it away anyhow. Thanks. Take the broom. And give the broom to Rose. Here you go. Thank you. I'm really quite glad that you're here. I'm glad, too. You've had to cope with much worse, I know. I'm grateful Rachel has someone as strong as you. How are you doing, Chloe? How am I doing? Your generation loves to talk about how awkward different things are. Well, this must be pretty awkward, I'd imagine. Yeah. I guess I'm not great. Rachel and I were really happy a few hours ago, and now... Maybe you can see why James wanted to keep this a secret. There are many painful things about Rachel's past, including my own role in hiding the truth. Doesn't matter how painful it is. You don't lie to someone you love. You might be right. But can any of us really know what we would do in his situation? He's been a devoted father for 15 years. I know he loves Rachel more than anything. I'm surprised you're defending him after what he did at the Overlook. It might be hard for you to understand, but after 13 years of marriage, I'm not threatened by what happened. You're right. I don't understand. You don't have to worry about me or James. Rachel's the one who needs you right now. Do you think Sarah is dangerous? I've never met her, so I don't know but I'm inclined to trust my husband. His entire life is about keeping people safe. Rachel's extremely fortunate to have him as her father. Thanks. Thank you, Chloe. Let's talk to James before we head upstairs. <sighs> Um, this must be hard for you, too, Master Amber. It could be far worse. My biggest fear is that Rachel will try to meet Sarah. I've dreaded it. So that's why you never told her? You have no idea what pain Sarah's caused. Her addiction has led her to do terrible things. I don't want Rachel to go through any of that. I... I don't understand. Are you afraid that Sarah would do something to Rachel? I don't think she would deliberately harm anyone. But addicts can cause tremendous harm without meaning to. Yeah. But Rachel's not a baby Listen anymore. Listen to me. 
Sarah brought criminals and drug dealers into our home. She put Rachel in serious danger just to chase her habit. Do you think Sarah is involved with any of the drug dealers around here? It wouldn't surprise me if she were. That's who she is. Chloe, I believe Rachel trusts you more than anyone else right now. Is this where you ask me to manipulate Rachel into doing what you want? This is where I ask you to do as your conscience dictates. But please, put my daughter's safety first. That is something I will always do. She's so young. You are too. But I know you've experienced loss. Protect her from that. Please. I'll do what I can. I care about her too, you know? I know. Thank you. Holy shit. Rachel completely destroyed that table. Yeah. That won't be it. that won't be usable anymore. All right, let's go upstairs. See uh, how Rachel's doing. Uh, Rachel? I need some way to show Rachel that I'm here for her. I just like how Rachel's room is decorated. Very nice. Hey, Rachel. I'm glad you're here, Chloe. Of course. I could get grades like this. I just don't want to. Rachel's always made being an A student seem so easy. Almost sad to see all this effort. I think Rachel could use another subject. But which one? Anatomy. That's the one. <laughs> I bet Rachel could have any study partner she wanted. Not that I would let her. At least she'll have something from tonight. Even you, Willie, couldn't come up with the tragedy Rachel's going through. Rachel's really into stars. I wonder if it's her way of feeling connected. I bet Rachel would rather be anywhere but here. Maybe I can make the world a less scary place. On stage, I think Rachel said...
Makes sense that Rachel needs two signs to contain her awesomeness. I shall call her Lion Crab from now on. Lion Crab? This light needs more light. Wonder what I could find around here to brighten up that nightlight. Rachel's surrounded by so much love, yet she seems so uh, alone. To our wonderful daughter on the night of her first show, break a leg. We love you, Mom and Dad. Rachel even knows how to make a dinky lamp look cool. The yin and badass yang of Rachel Amber. Above all, remember, you are loved. Before all else, be armed, Machiavelli. We were so close to making our break last night. Now... I don't know. Is there a section on how to walk fours through batshit crazy family drama? No? Type 4, the individualist. Type 4s can be the most creative of the types when they are able to reach their potential. At their best, type 4s are inspired, productive, sensitive, and independent. In a difficult environment, however, type 4s can fall into melancholy and self-indulgence. Fours craft their own identities by picking and choosing a select few of their emotions to rely on, and all but blocking out the rest. Type fours define themselves by their differences from other people. While this can lead to incredible talent and creativity, it can also lead to an unhealthy obsession on their perceived deficiencies and flaws. The best thing for a four is to learn how to get, let go of feelings from the past and focus on the potential that the future holds. May you always be safe. Sure. Let's take that flashlight. Chloe, I'm leaving the door unlocked in case you don't have your key. Please come home. Doesn't matter that it's after curfew. Mom, I can't right now. Please. There was a group t message. Interesting how the dome of that nightlight kind of just fits around the flashlight there. All ready for Rachel's light show. Better get her attention first. Stars. Hey, check it out. It's beautiful. I thought you might like it. I've always loved stars. Why? It reminds us there's so much beauty out there, which we almost never see. Because we're blinded by what's in front of us. <laughs> I 
Exactly. But then I learned the truth. The stars we're seeing have already been dead for millions of years. They're all <laughs> lies. But that doesn't make them any less beautiful, right? I don't know. If they're not even real, then what's the point? <sighs> it's all lies. Everything. My entire life. My dad. <laughs> My mom. If I can even call her that anymore. And that other woman, my real mom, she's the biggest lie of all. I can't trust any of them. I think you're the only one in the world I can trust. I'll take it, even if it's only by process of elimination. <laughs> I wore this bracelet my entire life. I never even asked why. Never even thought about it. <laughs> Somehow, I think I always knew. Even when I didn't know. That my real mother was gone. The fact that she's here right now, that she came here for me, I think I need to see her. Is that wrong? I don't think so. Of course not. But it, it might be tough to track her down. Yeah, that's true. Luckily, I've got my secret weapon. But what if we can't find her? It's not like I can ask my dad. I have no idea where to start. Let me handle it. Really? Really. <laughs> Mysterious. I like it. Of course, even if we know where she is, we need a way to get to her. I can't just ask my parents for a ride. Don't worry. I've got that one covered, too. You do? Yep. In fact, anything you could come up with, I'll handle it. It's just like I told that biker dude at the mill, who was a lot scarier than this mom of yours could ever be. There could be flamethrowers, an army of robot ninjas, and a motherfucking dragon on a leash between you and her. And I would still find a way to get you there. <laughs> Chloe fucking Price. My magical Shakespeare fairy. Shut up. <laughs> but once we find her, how do I talk to her? What do I say? After my dad died, I was worried I wouldn't know how to talk to him anymore. But somehow, when we speak, I always know what to say. When you speak? In my dreams. He's there. 
It's so real. It's almost like it's another part of my life. It used to be the only part that mattered. I've never told anyone about that. Weird, huh? Uh, Rachel? I was just thinking. Maybe I was wrong before. <laughs> Who cares if the stars are dead? As long as we can still see them, that means they're real. To us. Right? Right. Another dream sequence. Dad, I think we're stuck. Hey. Maybe you should let me drive. You always do it wrong. That was one time. When are you going to let it go? <laughs> Remember when we used to work on cars together? Those are some of my favorite memories. We never... That wasn't... you. Hmm. Could have sworn that was me. All right, you win. Why don't you go take a look? You sure? wrong don't you see anything like what there's nothing here really that's odd well I know it's not the spark plug I just got that replaced what I said it's not the spark plug Stop. N none of this is real. You're not real. K Ra Rachel's family isn't real. This whole thing, it, it's, it's all just theater. Well, you know what William Shakespeare said. Something about the whole world being a stage, so might as well act the fuck out of it. Nailed it. But I don't want to be an actor. I just want to be myself. Aww. Give me a break. Hmm. Well, maybe there's a reason we pretend. Maybe the lies we tell each other are less horrible than the truths we keep hidden. Wow. That's 
pretty dark, Dad. Where do you think you get it from? There's my cue. Dad? Relax, sweetie. It's all pretend, right? Right. Just a bit of stage magic. Floodlights, sound effects. Chloe, look at me. Look at me, sweetheart. It's going to be okay. And Victoria just has to do that. Go boo! <laughs> it always makes me laugh when I see that part. Okay. I saw Sarah leaving Frank's RV. He might know how to find her. Plus, he likes me. And he owes me one from yesterday. I can do this. Come on, dude. Pick up. Price, I got your collector's fee. Coming to get it? Hey, Frank. I was actually gonna cash in for a favor instead. What do you say? Never run out of crap, do you? What's the problem? I need to find that woman from yesterday. Sarah. Frank? What the hell for? Something important. Can you help? I'm trying to help a friend. It would mean a whole lot to her. The girl with you at the mill? <sighs> yeah. I'll be in the junkyard in two hours. <sighs> Sweet. Thanks, man. You're a real... <sighs> that went well, I guess. What am I getting myself into? what? Hmm. I'm a good kisser? Okay, that. Also, we're meeting Frank at the junkyard in two hours. I think he can get us in touch with Sarah. Holy crap. Yep, I'm still at my house. Just showering and then grabbing tools for the truck. So meet at junkyard? I'll be there. You're amazing, Chloe Price. Okay, I've got two hours to kill. A shower would be fucking amazing. Inaccurate as of yesterday. Someone should update this photo. What do I want the record to show? Burning or burn out? I'd say I went down in a place of glory. Figures. Um, what? Nice to see my work is appreciated. Rachel really is good at everything she does. Thou art an idiot. <laughs> Hang in there, Skip. I wonder if that's the universe where Dad's alive and Rachel has three happy parents. Have I ever watered that?
Is mom playing music? Huh. Oh, Rachel, Rachel, Rachel! Is that... David's towel? Where the hell is mine? Who can... Maybe Mom threw my towel in here. Nope. No awesome pirate towel. Lots of washcloths. No towel. Gross. I truly hate seeing so much of David's shit around here. I don't even know what's in there. Let's take a look. Score. Can't believe Max and I were so into this shit when we were kids. Wait a minute. Captain Bluebeard's hair dye. Max was going to make me a pirate, but we were ready for the best shower of my life. Hot water. Don't let me down. And of course we have a transformational shower scene. I need new clothes. What do I feel like wearing on this crazy ass day? Well, since we went into the effort to get this cone of fire shirt, let's use that. All right, one last thing. I need to get Dad's tools so I can fix that truck. Dad's toolbox should be in the garage downstairs. I remember this. Mom loved it. Wait. Is today Mother's Day? Shit. Can I just give that to mom again for Mother's Day? Shit. David really is moving in. Is 
Also, if I put this photo out, mom just hides it in a different drawer? What the hell? I wonder who gave this to mom. Hey, mom's keeping her ring. Sweet, kind of really glad I stole that money for her. Suck it, Arcadia Pawn. Because nothing screams compensating for something like a bright yellow sports car. Sports cars are really good for... Hot Rod Flames. Flames. Lots of flames. With that... Ready to go downstairs. One day, I'll look at that and think, huh, my old home, and not fuck this shithole forever. Here goes. What are the chances I can avoid mom or David? I'm gonna guess that they're somewhere around zero. <laughs> I'm flipping them over. <laughs> Not yet, I told you. Three minutes each side. They're gonna burn. Oh, you're the expert now. I can't stand it. I'm telling you, it'll make a mess. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you don't have to make me breakfast. I'd settle for flowers. You cook all the time. I want you to have a break at home. <laughs> you are one class act, David Madsen. Huh. Mom actually looks pretty happy right now. Hey, who's there? Hey. Chloe, your hair. When did you... Was this for the play? I heard you performed last night. Nope. I mean, I, I did. But this is... Uh, is something different. None of that matters now. Oh, I am so glad to see you. Good to see you, Chloe. Coming home was a smart decision. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Thank you, sweetheart. I... Uh, I didn't get you anything. Having you back home is present enough. I'm just here to pick up something. Then I... Uh, I have to go. Are you coming home tonight? Mom, I... I don't know. I wish you would tell me what you're up to. Just hanging out with Rachel. I'm... I'm just hanging out with Rachel. Oh, how is Rachel? I was telling David about the play and you being in it. I really gotta go. Listen, wait. Before you go, David has something to say to you. It won't take but a minute. All right, fine. Mom.
Chloe. I... Uh, I don't have time for this. Now, hold on a minute. Please. I... owe you an apology. Let's hear it. <sighs> Chloe, I should not have asked you to empty your pockets yesterday. I was, uh, out of line, and I'm sorry. That's it? That's it? That's your apology? Well, now, I thought that- What about sorry for not trusting me in the first place? And convincing my mom to mistrust me too? That's not David's fault. What about sorry for calling me a loser? And always talking to me like I just came out of juvie. What about sorry for lecturing me all the time when you're fucking no one? You're not my dad. Who the hell gave you that right? What about sorry for moving in with my mom against my wishes? Chloe. Chloe, I know you don't like me. I know you think I don't understand you, but I do. I've been meaning to show you something. This is my friend Phil Becker. We served in the same unit. Two tours. Becker was killed near the end of our deployment. Roadside IED. We used to joke about all the trouble we were going to get into once we got back home. But he died. He died and I didn't. And I think about that fact every damn day. The point is, I've had my share of grief. I know what you're going through. So I guess what I'm saying is, I'm here to do what, whatever I can to help you get over the loss of your dad. Please, I'm begging you. Give David a chance, won't you? Here. Why don't you keep this photo for a little while? Uh, think about what I've said. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Losing an army buddy, even if you are very close to him, is not the same as losing a parent. But even with that, I think David's at least trying. So, I would accept David's offer. David looks so young. And this Phil guy... They look close. Thank you, David. Oh, Chloe. Mom. I'm just so proud of you both. Mom, I really need to go. Be careful out there, Chloe. I love you, sweetheart. All right, all right. What the hell? Just gotta grab Dad's toolbox and then get out of here quick. <laughs> What's the matter, David? 
Don't want any more decorations inside your toolbox? Come on. <sighs> Work with me here. a bit more love. I can salvage this beast. I just need to find the right tool for each problem. Let's turn on the radio. Stan Stanwyck here and we've got a special treat for all you Sunday Funday listeners out there. It's Live pretty loose. How Skip can I Matt, tighten it? Lead singer of Pisshead, one of the Bay's hottest new bands. Say hi to the fans, Skip. <clears throat> hi, this fans. connection is now, pretty Skip, shaky. I, understand you I could fix this battery post if I could account. get a good enough grip on it. Uh, yeah. Uh, th that's, that's true. Keeping the kitties safe by day and melting their faces off The distributor by cap looks pretty that gross. Plan, Skip? Uh, <laughs> I need something small to scrape yeah, the gunk off the something cap. Something like that. Fantastic. We're about to play a brand new track from Pisshead. And if you haven't heard these guys, looks yet, like someone tried to what crash I want you to do is up. crank that stereo up as Sometime loud as before it goes. I was born. If anyone complains, what do you tell him, Skip? At this point, uh, I think that ancient duct tape rules? is better than anything I can do. Better leave it be. And because it's Pisshead. I should have seen you come through my periphery. So now I find some comfort in you, agony. I'm full of melancholy, content to eat despair. I try to put you out, but it's no use. You're always there. I spew profanity with the other words So I take a back seat For she's a prodigy The creature in the mirror My friend I call misery Hey, not at all You're with me Thank you. 
And that needle should be in the radio dial, not below it. Another bug that needs to be fixed for the remaster. All right, let's start fixing stuff. I can definitely... <sighs> Much better. This thing is going to the fuck up. Maybe. Sick. Gross. But also... Kind of inspiring. Hmm. <laughs> what do I see? <laughs> I know. That's five. Check this this thing yet. seems pretty gunked up. I think I should move on to something else. Fits like a deadly electric glove. I finally grab a screwdriver for the distributor cap. That should help keep shit distributed. Well, fuck. Go back from whence you came. Spark plugs busted. Carbon deposits. Of course. Please, I need you. Yes! 
I'm good looking. Hey! Junkyard Queen! Where are you at? Hey! Holy shit! Your hair! It's so... <laughs> Badass. <laughs> I was gonna say hot. But, yeah. Badass too. Hey, not sure if you saw, but someone moved your truck. No way. Should we check it out? Hey, Price. Nice wheels. Frank. What are you doing here? You're early, Frank. What's the occasion? It's his fucking bar mitzvah. Frank here's becoming a man. Aren't you, big guy? What's he doing here? Hey, I thought we were cool after that Drew North thing. Don't you want to be cool? I just want to talk to Frank. As long as you don't get in the way, we'll be fine. <laughs> I told you. She's like this. Gotta say, I really dig the whole tough girl thing. Frank was right about you. How'd you like to work full time for us? Don't fucking touch her. Why is it that chicks think it's okay to hit me? But if I lay a single finger on them, suddenly it's a whole other thing. Frank says you were asking about a client of his. That true? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. I don't see why you should give a shit. You don't? Huh. Maybe I'll show you. See, you two Nancy Drews decided it would be a good idea to call your drug dealer and ask about his business. I didn't go to a fancy academy, but that doesn't strike me as smart. Maybe it was this man's sunny disposition that confused you, but he's got a whole other side to him that I don't think you'd like. Should we let them see it? We're just talking here. <sighs> okay, then let's talk. I want to know right now why you give a shit about this woman. This is between us and Frank. It's none of your fucking business. Problem is, you made it my business. And your tough girl shit is starting to get on my nerves. Look, none of this matters. All we care about is that you stop asking questions. Got it? No. Tell me where she is now, Rachel. Wait a minute. <laughs> no way. What the fuck is your pro Rachel? As in Rachel Amber? Should have <laughs> called her lion crab. That makes so much sense. This is James Amber's fucking kid. Damon, your dad's a real piece of shit, you know. We know. We were aware. Not sure what that has to do with us. Me neither. But I'd like to find out. Here's what happens next. Come on, man. They're just kids. No. 
they're not. This one is the fucking DA's daughter. And right now, she's going to fill me in on what her daddy is up to and how he's connected to that whore everyone's asking about. Damon, calm down. We're still talking. Everything's still cool. No need to get crazy. Uh! Ah! Uh! The weird thing is that how Chloe brings Rachel up to the seventh floor of the hospital instead of, like, the emergency room. Here comes James. Rachel is going to be all right. The knife damaged her brachial artery, but didn't cut it. She's out of surgery, and now she's resting. Chloe, what happened? It's my fault. I should have listened to you. I, I even saw your file saying Sarah was connected to Damon Merrick. I know exactly who Damon Merrick is. Start over and tell me everything. Did you and Rachel try to contact Sarah? I'm not going to chastise or blame you, Chloe, but I need the whole story. So, I got my dealer to meet us since he knows Sarah. Frank Bowers. Yeah, that's right. But Damon showed up with him. What did Merrick want? I, I think he wanted to scare us so he'd stop asking questions about his business. Is that how it became violent? It was... it was actually Rachel who got angry. She was furious that he wouldn't tell her where Sarah was. This is exactly what I've been afraid of. Rachel won't let anything stop her. It wasn't only that. She was already angry about Damon pushing me around. She is like her mother. 
quick-tempered, rash. I've always been afraid of losing her the way I lost Sarah. What happened next? Damon had a knife out. We all could see it. But then he said something that pissed Rachel off. And she just grabbed a piece of wood and hit him. And then he stabbed her. I keep thinking that maybe I could have done something, but... Like grab that knife. When he attacked her, I just froze. It's not your fault. And Frank held him off so we could get to the truck. I heard a scream. But I don't know what happened. And then we were here. I appreciate you telling me the truth. What are you going to do about Damon? Find out if he is alive. First of all, my department's been after him for some time. I was told that if Rachel had arrived only a few minutes later, she might not have... Um... Thank you, Chloe. You saved my world. It will be some time before Rachel wakes up. I promise. I'll let you know when she does. Okay. Thanks. Hey, Steph, how's Mikey? Pretty good. Miss Amber just told me Rachel's going to be okay. I'm really glad. Yeah. Well, our room's just down the hall. You should come by. Okay, sure, definitely. I don't think I can sit still any longer. Might as well stretch my legs while I wait for Rachel to wake up. Oh shit. I know those guys. Uh, this doesn't look like the maternity wing. Uh, there's a sign for the prenatal class. I can't believe we're finally doing this! I'm so excited! You're gonna be a good dad. <laughs> I guess I'm glad we stole their wine. This poster seems to be missing some context. Okay, nurses. The world wants to know. What's so funny? Let's do a clean joke. Cleanliness is next to godliness. In really short dictionaries. Ooh, they're hygienic and they're witty. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Not that I have any coins anyway. Oh, <laughs> man. Jackpot. Third time's the charm. Yes. <laughs> I want like 
20 more of those. But there isn't a bin next to this vending machine. So, it sounds like- If I want to stay sane, I need to stay busy. What's there to do around here? It sounds like Chloe threw the uh, wrapper into a bin, but there's no bin next to the vending machine. That's kind of weird. Damn. Are these all firefighters? I think this vending machine could be improved. <laughs> oh yeah. I get it. Right. Guess the citizens of Arcadia Bay aren't feeling so generous. Is this Mikey's room? That must be their dad. Is that Mikey and Drew's dad? All right then. Thank you. Hi. Mr. North? That's me. And you are? I'm Chloe. You here to see Mikey? Yeah. How are, uh, how are things going? Oh, you know how it is. Ups and downs. Mikey's hurt, of course. But the doctors are saying it should heal up relatively quick. And Drew? Hey, maybe you heard. He's all set to go to Oregon State. Full ride for four years. That's... That's awesome. Hold on. You said you were Chloe. Mikey's mentioned you a few times now. I have a question maybe you can answer. Sh sure Both of those boys have been acting a little... well... guilty lately. Yeah, I, I've been spending most of my time looking for work. I'm worried I, I missed something important. Do you know if anything's going on with them? You should probably ask Drew. You should probably ask Drew. I, uh, don't really know any details. I do know that whatever it is, they did it because they wanted to help you. Thanks, Chloe. I know they've been trying to help me out, money-wise. We're a family, you know? We deal with things together. Oh, excuse me. I love how soothing Mr. North's voice sounds. It's very deep and calming. Chloe. Hey, you made it. Hey, Chloe. Hey. How's the arm, Mikey? I wish it was the other one. So I could draw and stuff. But other than that, it's just broken. Sweet hair, by the way. I bet you could pull off Sailor Mercury. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Any news about Rachel? Her mom seemed hopeful. How'd she get hurt? You'll think I'm joking when I tell you, but I'm not. Why? What happened? Rachel was stabbed in the arm by Damon fucking Merrick. Yeah, that's not funny. Shit. You serious? Fuck that guy. It wasn't because of me, was it? Oh, no. We got our own set of problems with him. That's crazy. The whole thing makes me want to just... I swear, 
If I ever meet that shithead, I'm gonna... What? What are you gonna do when you meet Damon Merrick? Something terrible. Uh-huh. I am. Like... <laughs> Challenge him to a karaoke battle? <laughs> yeah, that's how we settle things on the street, huh? Okay. Throw dice at him. Criticize his taste in film. Okay. Tell him about a band he's probably never heard of, but should have. Enough! Anyway, we're glad Rachel's okay. Oh, uh, you should hang out here till she wakes up. Rachel's gonna be up soon. Should probably head over when I'm ready. Huh. <laughs> Those must be from Steph's parents. Tell Rachel she's gotta come to board game night. Soon. Hey. Can I sign your cast? Yeah, definitely. Hmm, something nerdy. But not too nerdy. There you go. Cool. Mikey's nurses must love this. <laughs> Healing potions, six magic beans, a kiss from a beautiful woman. <laughs> Look at that. Wells being nice for a change. Like he's entering into a cartoon contest? <laughs> I hope he wins. Ah, oh, man. Did I miss the robot visit? One other thing. Steph and Drew aren't leaving Mikey's side. That's cute, I guess. Is your shirt a fire cone? Uh, <laughs> sure. Why not? That's one of my favorite spells. From our tabletop game. You're thinking about tabletop right now? Why, of course. I had to hide our game from the nurse. She thinks it's negatively affecting my mood. Elamon's backed himself into a pretty tight spot this time. He might not make it. Wait a sec. Calamastia. She can join Elamon in battle. Maybe the two of us together could actually make it out alive. Wait. You're into this nerd shit too? Totally. It's a game where I win if I make up crazy shit and act like a badass. So yes. I hate to be such a game master about it, but I'm pretty sure Chloe's character died last time. Oh, yeah. Wait a sec. Didn't you have that anklet of reincarnation in your inventory? Uh, yeah. I totally did have that thing. Holy shit! So you can actually swoop in and save my ass. What do you say? Alright, let's do it. You gotta save Elamon, right? We rejoin Elamon as he majestically soars over the Traveler's path. He glances over his shoulder, only to discover his pursuers are right behind him. Wait. You can fly? I'm a wizard. Plus, I kind of have to since you cut my feet off last time. Oh, yeah. I totally did that. You totally did. This game is awesome. Elamon comes around a corner to discover... Calamastia, the elf barbarian, sitting by a fire, roasting squirrels. What's up? 
Sup? Sup? I'm running from Dragonkin because of you. Remember when you killed that jailer and took his key to free the prisoners in the prison camp? <laughs> Turns out you offended their entire clan. And they're after me now. Need a hand? Sounds like you could use a hand from your favorite elf barbarian. Your crotch punching abilities are second to none. Suddenly, Dragonkin scouts rush in, clawing you while your backs are turned. Take four damage. You're up first. What do you want to do? Ooh. Let's disarm them. I disarm them. They're not carrying weapons. Then I grab the arm of the nearest dragonkin and rip it from its socket. Eighteen? <laughs> okay, you now wield a severed dragonkin arm. What's next? I beat them to death with it. You curl the fingers into a fist and bludgeon them with it, swinging the arm with a blind fury until no dragonkin remain. Hey, nice one. Don't celebrate yet. You begin to hear the clinking armor of hundreds of dragonkin warriors. The sound grows louder as they grow closer. And this is why I was running. Running sounds good. <sighs> running and living. Yeah, sounds like a plan. You sprint as fast as you can until you come across a fork in the road. One path leads into the mouth of a deep, dark cave. The other takes you into a dense, misty forest. Which way do you go? Let's feel it out first. Can I... you know... feel it out first? Totally. Roll for perception. <laughs> 19. You become still, channeling your elf hearing into the caves. Inside, you hear something moving around. It sounds squishy. And possibly very, very evil. Okay. Not the cave. Got it. Not so fast. You now turn to listen to the forest. You hear the spirits of those buried there, whispering to each other. This is sacred ground. Okay. Come on. The dragonkin are still behind us. To the caves! Maybe the dragonkin won't follow us into the caves. Let's go there. I guess I don't have a better plan. You plunge into the darkness. The uneven, rocky terrain beneath your feet makes it difficult to navigate. You come around a corner to find a cube of bright green goo sitting in your path. Dead rats float around inside it, slowly dissolving. <sighs> of course. It's a gelatinous polyhedron. You fall into it. Ugh. Seriously? It starts to burn your skin. A little at first, but the pain only grows the longer you stay stuck. I cast Scorching Scythe. Your flame-made scythe slices the gelatinous polyhedron in half, freeing your companion. <laughs> but right before your very eyes, the two halves grow and shift until you're face to jelly with two full gelatinous polyhedra. Damn. Your move. Hmm, striking smash. Striking smash. I'm gonna smash the shit out of them. You bring the flat of your axe down over the polyhedra, smashing them each into three little globs. <laughs> but yet again, the chunks of jelly grow and shift until you're looking at a small army of six gelatinous polyhedra. Wh where do you keep getting these? A good game master is always prepared. The polyhedra engulf you, burning any exposed skin and searing your clothes. Take 12 damage. I cast Ring of Fire. 
you send out a burst of fire, exploding the polyhedra into hundreds of tiny pieces. Rage roll. Um, let's try... Rage roll! You curl up into an angry little elf ball and roll furiously around the caves, smashing each of the little jelly bits into even more, even littler jelly bits. Uh, I feel like we should run. Run screaming. Luckily, gelatinous polyhedra have a very low movement speed. The party flees safely, but the polyhedra aren't far behind. You're near the exit of the caves when you run across. Oh shit, is that me? You're gonna play? Yeah, little brother. Pavel, the arrogant gnome bard, joins your party. Gnome bard? Gnome bard? That's what she said. Know any firewalk? No, I don't know any of your shitty music. Damn. Uh, big talk. For a little body. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? There's probably a squirrel somewhere that you could fight. I don't need violence to solve my problems. I just need the power of music. This is awesome. Fine, but don't slow us down. In the time you've been chatting, the army of gelatinous polyhedra has caught up to you. Several spew acid directly at Elamon. What do you do? I, I heroically jump in front of Elamon, using my axe to block each attack. You block almost every attack, but one makes it through. Take six damage. Hey, thanks. Do you have to be the hero? That's just selfish. The army is still advancing. What do you do next? Run. <laughs> We can't fight a whole army of them. Not just with a gnome bard as backup. We should run. Doing a lot of running today. Shut up. As you close in on your path out of the caves, all the gelatinous polyhedra smush together to form a boss polyhedra. It's catching up to the party. Shit. <laughs> Let's throw the bard. Huh. I, I pick up the bard and throw him like a football. Right at the monster. What the hell? Brutal. Uh, despite the perfect spiral his oddly shaped body makes, as it spins through the air, the small gnome doesn't do much damage. Then he begins to slowly dissolve before your eyes inside the gelatinous polyhedron's acidic grasp. Let's go. Cool. So harsh. His screams follow you. A perfect E flat. As you escape into the meadows, you burst forth into the majestic meadow, horizon to horizon. All you can see is lush, green fields full of birds, flowers, and dragonkin. What? Instead of chasing you, they circle around to set a trap, and you just walked right into it. As the dragonkin ahead prepare to attack, the army of gelatinous polyhedra arrive behind you. <sighs> We're surrounded and screwed. Ah, come on, Elamon. I'm sure you've got some sweet spell that'll save us. Uh, I do have Searing Crystal. Perfect! Searing Crystal, these fuckers! <laughs> you don't get it. Drew's just this isn't just there. another battle spell. This crystal is like... Like dropping a nuke. It'll kill everything. Including you and me. Actually, you did grab Durgron's Bracer of Fire Immunity. Whoever wears it would survive. See? Problem solved. <sighs> but there's only one bracer. <sighs> oh. 
Mikey loves his character. I, I can't just let him get Elamon killed. Elamon, keep the bracer and cast the spell. I'll hold them off so you can survive. It won't work. Look at all of them. I should have never started this quest. I'm too weak. Elamon, you beat the shit out of Durgaron and took his bracelet. Bracer. Yeah, that. See, you can do anything. But I've never even used this spell before. What if I roll too low? So you've never used this spell before. You've also never died. It's gonna be a first time either way. You're the only friend who's ever helped me. I, I can't leave you behind. You're, like, the most heroic person I know. You help everyone. It's my turn to save you from something. No, Calamastia, I won't just kill you. You'll kill all of these monsters, too. Think of how many lives you'll be saving by nuking their stupid faces off. All right. I'm so sorry, Chloe. Elamon secures the Bracer of Fire immunity on his wrist. He gives the Elf Barbarian one last nod and reaches to the sky. The searing crystal lifts from his hands, floating up into the clouds. You got this, bro. Suddenly, an explosion. Fire arcs outward in a ring. Then the ring begins to spin. Whoa. A quiet stillness encompasses the meadow as all creatures gaze upward at the swirling flames. Thank you, Chloe. For everything. The flames descend over the meadow, bathing everything in liquefying arcs of infernal chaos. Monsters begin screaming in agony. Bad ass. Chloe, you've got one final moment before your angry elven body is burned away forever. Any last words? I turn to Alamon and say, thank you, before the flames burn me away forever. Alamon rolls not to cry. I rolled a three. The spell comes to a spectacular climax, until all you can see is white. Then, all is calm. All is quiet. All is ash. Damn. Congratulations, Alamon. You have completed Revenge of the Dragonkin. That's it? She's dead? And the game's over? Yep. And Elamon's left alone once again. It was fun having a companion while it lasted. Well, what if I make a new character? Wait, really? You want to keep playing? Sure. This is going to be dope. That was a pretty intense one. Yeah. Thanks for playing. It always means a lot to Mikey. Seems like the least I could do. I barely knew Mikey two days ago, and now I feel... kind of protective. Thanks for playing, Chloe. That was one of the most emotional adventures I've ever had. Say hi to Rachel for us. We're rooting for her. Hey, wait up a sec. Sorry I got angry at you yesterday. About the money. You were just trying to help. I, I told you, I was working for Frank. I know. That doesn't mean you weren't trying to help us too. When you said 
that Damon stabbed Rachel, I kept thinking, I'm supposed to look out for Mikey, not bring this shit into his life. I think you saved us from something so much worse. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thanks for stopping by. Bye, Chloe. Chloe, this is Mr. Amber. Yeah. Rachel is just waking up now. I'm sure she'd love to see you. Thanks. Hey. Just heard the fire went out. Went out? You mean it's controlled? No. It's completely out. It extinguished itself. How could that be? Hell if I know. It extinguished itself, huh? I'm so relieved that Rachel's awake. I should see her right away. No visitors. Huh? You didn't have to bring me ice cream. Is that... Samantha Myers? I feel bad. Holy shit. Is that Nathan Prescott? It wasn't your fault. Um, I'm a klutz. Oh, God. Nathan and Samantha... together? What have I done? I should have seen that biker, though. <laughs> I just think it's sweet you wanted to take my photograph. Of course. I think it came out really well, too. Wait till you see it. I really regret overhearing that. Wow. Rachel's mom does not look okay. Hey. Chloe, I can't even express thank you so much. I'm sorry. I'm a wreck. I stepped out to get some air. Rachel doesn't need me crying in front of her. Your hair. I almost didn't notice it. Oh. Yeah. It's... It's not a big deal. I bet Rachel loves it. I can't imagine what I would do if we lost her. Me too. You've grown so close, haven't you? Yeah. It's weird to think we just met a few days ago. When you meet someone who changes everything, you just know. Well, hang in there, Mrs. Amber. I will. <sighs> Rachel's mom loves her so much. I'm sure Rachel can't wait to see you. <sighs> I'm so glad Rachel's okay. That... I'm glad that you're here. Me too, Rachel. It really hurts. Shh. The pain will pass. Chloe's here. You want me to stay? No. I'll be okay. Thanks, Dad. I'll come back in a little while. <laughs> My guardian angel. <laughs> I saw Steph earlier. 
She says, hey. <laughs> Stuff's so cute, but not as cute as you. Stop. I mean it. Rachel, I'm sorry. What? What for? You're here because of me. Because I choked back there in the junkyard. What? Shut up. You were so fierce and I, I just froze. God, I fucked it up. I'm so sorry. And and you saved my life. You saved my life. I almost lost you. I can't believe I almost- You're not getting rid of me that easy. Good. Happy that your dad's here. I mean, I'm still mad at him for everything he's done. But it felt so good to lean on him. He's my dad, you know? I felt completely safe. Like on Mount Hood. Would you do something for me? Anything. Sarah. The mom. <laughs> it's so weird to say. I'm not even sure what she is, honestly. But... <laughs> I think I still want to meet her. I figured you would. I figured you would. I don't even know if she's still in Arcadia Bay. But if she is, will you find her, please? You really want this, don't you? I do. Chloe, I really do. All right. Then, of course, whatever it takes. I bet my dad has her number, maybe in his office. Our house keys just under the mat. The code is 0722. To your... Your dad's office? 0722. Yeah. My birthday. I'll find her, Rachel. And then I'll... I'll tell her how fucking cool you are. Thank you, Chloe. For everything. Chloe kisses her before leaving. Nice little touch there. Uh, uh, hey, Elliot. Hey! Wait. Your hair, it's different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like it. It's... Uh, it's nice. Uh, 
nice balloon, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's from Mikey. Were you just in there? I'm actually here for Rachel. What? Rachel's here? What happened? I think she's keeping that private for now. She's okay, though. Well, that's good. I guess I'll stop by after I see Mikey. She probably wants privacy. Oh. Right, of course. Are you... Are you two in some kind of trouble? You can tell me if you are, you know. I won't judge. Nothing we can't handle. Nothing we can't handle. Chloe. I'm seriously worried about you. Well, don't be. Uh, I mean, you're hanging out with Rachel Amber a lot lately, right? So what? So, obviously, something is going on. I swear, man. Everything's really okay. Okay. I trust you. Just remember I'm here, okay? If you suddenly need something. Thanks. Oh. Hey, I, uh, I almost forgot. Did you, like, write on my whiteboard? <laughs> I totally did, didn't I? Yeah. I was, uh, pretty sure that was your handwriting. What did I write? You... Called me a creeper. Oh. <laughs> I was probably messing with you. Don't worry about it, man. Yeah. Creepers aren't, uh... You know, that stuff's not cool. Anyway. See you around. Yeah. See you around, Chloe. Hello? Nobody's home. I need to search this office for any communication with Sarah that can help me find her. If it can rain ash, I guess it could snow in LA. With a really violent globe shake. <laughs> it's the big one. James has a file on Frank. I'd love to read this, but I've got to focus on finding Rachel's mom.
More sherry. James sure keeps lots of files on people. Even if James is trying to protect Rachel from her mother, this seems like a pretty terrible way to act. James, this is enough. When you told me at the park that you weren't going to let me be a part of Rachel's life, of course I was angry, but I understood your need to protect her. It's your prerogative as a parent. But sending that man to talk sense into me? Threaten me? You're losing the moral high ground here. What kind of a way is that for a DA to act? What would the voters say? I have the right to meet my daughter. And the lawyer I spoke with agrees. But more importantly, Rachel has the right to know who her mother is. To know the truth. Do what you know is right. Sarah. Best dad. <laughs> that stuff is all politics anyway. Hello? Hmm. Sweet. The secret key. Now to find the secret lock. Hey, Price. Thanks again for playing with Mikey. <laughs> that was a good game. Good luck with whatever you're dealing with. Be safe. That's from all of us. Thanks. Mikey says, tell Chloe she can handle anything. Hope so. Chloe, this is David. Did my mom give you my number? Yes, she did. I noticed you took your father's toolbox. Are you working on a project? Sort of. What kind of project? Jeez, what happened to trusting me? No, no, I was just asking. Glad to see you taking an interest in something. Keep it up. Welcome to Shadyville. James's stamp collection. A secret phone. I have to know who James is talking to on the secret phone of his. It could be about Sarah. I'm told you can help me with my problem. Crossing the line, eh? Let's talk. We'll call tonight. I found who you were. I found who you were looking for. Call you in fifteen. Well, this isn't a charity. I'm gonna need you to do what we talked about. I can't. Sure you can, because I talked to your girl, and she has a big mouth. Turns out she's not so easy. We're going to need to be more hands-on. Don't hurt her. Relax. I've got my best guy on it. How's your daughter? You know she attacked me first, right? You really should teach her to behave better. Nothing? Guess I don't need this taken care of anymore. James is working with... Damon Merrick? This is insane. What were they talking about? Is the girl Damon's talking about Sarah? <sighs> Whatever is going on, I need to see if Damon knows where Sarah is. But how do I get him to tell me? You'll pay for what she did to Rachel. I told you she came at me. It was self-defense. Besides... She 
pretty sure you still need me. It's simple. Either you do what I want, or your little problem becomes a big problem. Now, did you take care of the evidence, or not? Shit. What do I say? I did. I know you're new at this, but here's how it works. You show me proof, I give you what you want. Hope James actually has this evidence. Don't think Damon will tell me where Sarah is. Unless I send him a picture. This must be what Damon was talking about. Shit. Which of these is Damon talking about? Huh. If TV has taught me anything, these babies will be swimming in DNA. I'm waiting. What? That's evidence, right? Yeah, and now you freaking destroy it. Why are you so bad at this? I'll get right on that. If I can figure out how. How do I destroy a glove? Maybe I can burn it somehow. Sarah sent all these letters, and James never gave them to Rachel? To my- So messed up. I'm not gonna read all these, but just gonna pause on each of them. The Sarah in this letter doesn't seem anything at all like the person James told us about last night. So, this looks like Sarah stopped cashing the checks James sent her. Guess he forgot to mention that during his story last night. Oof. Better not touch that again. You've taken care of it. Good. So? Since you're destroying evidence, might as well tell me which of my guys was the snitch. Any leads on who it might be? Sorry, that's your job. Tell me who it is, or maybe you'd rather deal with your problem yourself. Damn. I hope James has something here to tell me who Damon's informant is. So I need to find which of Damon's guys has been snitching? I should search around the office to see if there's any info to help me out. Feels a little weird having this guy's records at my finger. This is that freak from the mill. Wonder what Damon would think of his very cooperative comment. I agree to aid the courts on future cases. That could be seen as a little snitchy. Oh, man, this guy's the snitch? He was so cool to me at the mill. Wonder if there's someone else I could pin it on instead. Okay, there's no way that Frank is snitching on Damon. 
But I love learning about his badass loitering charge. Okay. If I'm going to accuse one of these guys, I'd better be sure I'm right. This guy let me into the mill. Cool dude. I totally knew this guy was a criminal when I stole from him. Could this douchebag be the snitch Damon's talking about? Guess this explains why Mr. Amber knows so much about Frank. I usually accuse Sheldon in this uh, situation, so let's do that. Shoot, really? I barely know that guy. And now he's going to wish we never met. Good work. Guess all that leaves is our handoff. Show me where you show me you have my payment and I'll tell you where to meet. Payment? Fuck. I've got your money. Good. Send me a pic and we're all set. Here's hoping James already has Damon's money. <sighs> but where would it be? I wonder if this has anything to do with Damon's stash. Holy shit. All right, good work. And now here's your girl, ready to go. Fuck, that's Sarah. And she's at the mill. What is he doing to her? Bring me the package and we can finish the job. On my way. Don't do anything in the meantime. You are you really are new at this. Better hurry. This chick's starting to get on my nerves. Holy shit. Does James even know what he's doing? Okay. I still have time. Damon's waiting for his money, right? He wouldn't do anything to her. Yet. Fuck. I need to get there fast. Chloe? Elliot? Hey! Elliot, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? This is Rachel's house, right? Did he really just follow me here? Did you... did you follow me from the hospital? I did. I'm worried about you. I'm fine. You're the one acting crazy. You shouldn't be here. Chloe, what is... Ah. Elliot, put that down. You have no idea what you're dealing with. And you do? Chloe. What have you gotten yourself into? You... You wouldn't understand. Give me a chance. What the hell are you doing? I... I, I can't tell you, but obviously this is pretty serious shit. That's why I need to leave right now. You mean serious for Rachel, right? But... But you're the one putting yourself in danger. Again! I'm so sick of you not seeing who Rachel really is. When will you realize what she's doing to you? Elliot, just take a step back. No! You need to listen to me. What has your relationship with her gotten you? You... you don't know what you're talking about. First night you hang out. What happens? 
you end up in a fight. You don't know what you're talking about. Rachel saved my ass. I'm sure that's how it seemed to you. Stop, stop suggesting that she's somehow bad The for... next day she convinces you to skip school. Magically, she barely gets in trouble. And you get suspended. I took the fall because I wanted to. Rachel tried to protect me. Yet somehow, it all worked out for her in the end. As usual. You don't understand. You weren't there! Was she protecting you when she made you take part in a play you didn't want to be in? S seriously, man. You, you need to shut the fuck up before- I've been quiet long enough! Look, Rachel is an amazing actress. And I don't mean on stage. She's fake. You're real. And I hate to see her manipulate you like this. Elliot. I, I promise, no one is manipulating me. No? Just look where you are now. A high school dropout. Hanging out with criminals and breaking into houses. It's crazy! It just as easily could have been you in that hospital today. If that ever happened... Dude, you... You know you sound a little stalkerish right now. Stalking is defined as repeated unwanted interactions. How long have my interactions been unwanted? You know who has the definition of stalker memorized to quote verbatim when accused of being a stalker? A stalker. Elliot. I'm the one who cares about you, Chloe. Me. Not Rachel. It's time you saw the truth. What does that mean? It means you're going to stop thinking about Rachel and pay attention to me now. For once. Look, I'm sorry. But I really need to go. Why did you make me do that? Can't you just listen to me? Elliot's gone full-blown crazy. I... I need to get the police to come without tipping him off. Who was there for you? When Max left? When your dad died? No one else gave a shit about you except for me! We have a lot to talk about. And I don't care how long it takes. We're not leaving until you see that I'm right. All right, Elliot. You want to talk so bad? Let's talk. What's really going on here? You can tell me. You mean here? Specifically? Like, uh, the Amber House? I'm talking about your situation. Rachel is dangerous. You need to realize that. You're right, Elliot. I didn't want to admit it before, but it's true. My life is at great risk. Thank you, Chloe. All I want is to help you. I'm glad you can finally see that. You're right. I do need help. I need help immediately. Hey, it's okay. I'm not going anywhere. I feel trapped. Boxed in. I desperately want to leave this situation. It takes a lot of guts to tell me all this. And I want you to know that I will always be there for you. No matter what. 
Ooh, the most awkward hug ever. It's the police. Okay, don't panic. Uh, I'm sure they'll just want to ask us why we're here. What do we do? I'll talk to them. Uh, shit, um, there's nothing to be concerned about. Thank you, Elliot. You're a great friend. So much destruction. All because Rachel got angry at her dad. Who's been lying to her all her life. And he's still lying. Hey, being a dad's tough. That doesn't justify what he's done. I'm just saying, I'd probably do anything to keep you safe. Hey, Dad? Yeah? Did you ever lie to me? I don't mean telling me that ashtray I made for Mom wasn't a piece of crap. I mean, like, really lied about something that might hurt me to know. What do you think? I suppose everyone lies about big things. I mean, the stuff mom doesn't know about me. So you probably lied too. Would you love me less? Of course not. You sound pretty sure, sweetheart. You were pretty sure mom would never fall in love with someone like David too. Are you really ready to hear the answer to your question? You know what, Dad? Never mind. I don't... I don't need to know. I like it better this way. What way? That I'll always be the perfect dad? How many people get to say that? No way. My ride, my tunes. Seriously going in to face Demon Merrick? All for Rachel. Am I crazy? Hella crazy. I'm glad you're here, Dad. You don't want me to go? No. I like the company. Besides, 
You don't want to miss this. Things are about to get real. Shit. Is that blood? Frank? Frank! This is bad. I'll get you help, Frank. But first, I've got to help Rachel's mom. Where the hell is Sarah? A knife might not be a bad idea. Never thought I'd have to say that. I'm not afraid. That should be ten. Yeah. Glad to see the bone made it. No more beer. No more time. I've got to keep moving. No! Everything's going to be just fine. Just a little longer, and all your troubles are going bye-bye. What the fuck? I just want to meet my daughter. Can't you understand? Why does your he- Your daughter? <laughs> Jesus. So that's what he's worried about. Can't let the public know. The mother of his daughter is some junkie. I just want to see her. You don't have to- Shut up. James Amber wants you out of the picture. So that's what's going to happen. This is so messed up. After all, no one believes a junkie. No. He said you've been sober a year. Respect. It's hard to kick this shit. You can do this. Damon. What the hell are you doing here? I've got the money right here. Your money. Want it? How the fuck? Ugh. Ugh. No! <sighs> Talking's over. Leave her alone! Shut up. What the 
fuck? You boosted the DA's shit? Got my money? Burned the evidence? All that? I'm just... trying to help. Get away from her! I said shut the fuck up! You are one stupid, crazy bitch. Should've never got mixed up in this shit. The DA's family, an out-of-town junkie, and now high school girls? What a fucking mess. It's okay. A girl's first time should be special. No. Not so tough now, are you? Go to hell. <laughs> That's the spirit. Hey, touch her again, and I'll kill you. Is that so? Try me. No. Go to your fucking happy place. Run. Let this be a lesson, kid. Make good life choices, or you'll end up like her. Now, what do I do with- Damon! What did you do? Ho 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 I fucked you up good, didn't I? Guess you really don't know when to quit. Glad to see you back on your feet. Chloe. Frank. You don't really want to do this again, do you? Okay. Then I don't want to do this again. Come on, man. Fuck you. Sarah. I really like how distorted the music sounds in this transition between scenes. I know you can barely hear it, but... Yeah, there is music in this transition, and it's kind of distorted. Sarah? Chloe Price. Where's Frank? Or, or demon. Your friend, Frank, took care of Damon. You don't need to worry about them right now. Sit. Sarah, are you okay? We need to talk about what happened. I am so, so sorry for- Rachel can never know. What exactly can't Rachel know? What James did. Hiring that thug. Shooting me up with- <sighs> He's a piece of shit. And I promise that- Rachel can never know. That's- Bullshit, Sarah. You're not listening. Rachel deserves to know what happened to you. No, she doesn't. Rachel deserves a loving father. A father who cares for her. James is a liar. James who... is a desperate man who loves his daughter. And she loves him. Tell her what happened here. And you'll take that away from her. Forever. And just, what is James protecting her from? You? She wants to meet you, Sarah. No, she doesn't. She wants to meet her mother. I can never be that for her. 
Why are you saying all this? Because James is right. He's taken something from me that I might not ever get back. But he's right. I'm broken. Everybody's broken, Sarah. Oh? Does everybody abandon their own child for 15 years? Does everybody take money to stay away? You're here now. That's what matters. What do you know? I know Rachel needs you. I know loss. I lost my father two years ago. How? Car accident. He was... He was picking up my mother from the grocery store, and a truck ran a red light, and that was it. I'm sorry. You don't know what this is to me. Every pain. Every fear. Gone. No more sadness. No more grief. Why would anyone not want to feel that way? Ever. I, I, I don't know anything about addiction, but I know what it's like to be needed by someone. It gives you strength you never knew you had. Rachel needs you. Rachel needs her family. I, I recognize I might not know what the fuck I'm talking about here, but I just... I wish you could know how amazing Rachel is. I know. She's fearless. She's brilliant and talented. And she feels so much. She's so strong. She's had a good life. Raised in a loving home, given opportunities I could never give her. At least talk to her. She's felt like something's been missing her whole life. She told me so. That something was you. She didn't miss anything. She has a perfect family. I used to think my dad was perfect. But now I realize he was probably just as messed up as everyone. And it doesn't make me love him any less. That's a nice thought. What Rachel needs, though, is not to have her father taken away from her. <sighs> he doesn't it's deserve- It's not about James. It's not about me, and it's not about you. It's about Rachel. Tell her what James did, and you'll be killing him for her. You understand that, don't you? You lost your father. Do you really want to put Rachel through that? Don't you want to see her? You came here for it. You got sober. You deserve the chance to know your daughter. Nothing can change the mistakes I made. I'll never get to be Rachel's mother. Not really. But there's one thing I can still do for her. The only thing I can do. Let me give her the father she deserves. The one who raised her. Protected her. The one who loves her more than anything.
You can do whatever you want, Chloe. You have the power. What you have to decide is whether you're going to protect Rachel or cause her even more hurt. So please, tell her I was never here. Let her have what peace she can without me. Wait! I'll take care of her, you know. I believe you. Goodbye, Chloe. Hello? Hi, Chloe. Rachel's just fallen asleep. I know she'll be thrilled to see you when she wakes up. Maybe come back a little later? Hey. Go back to sleep, kiddo. You need your rest. Can I talk to Chloe? Alone? For a minute? Okay, sweetie. We'll be right outside. How are you feeling? Like I got stabbed? <laughs> Doc says there'll be a sick scar. Maybe a tattoo is in order. Fuck yeah. We never actually escaped. Did we? We've got time. All the time in the world. So... How did everything go? Rachel, I've got to tell you something. I've done all the choices that I've made so far in the conversation with Sarah for a reason. And it all culminates with telling Rachel everything, so let's do that. Of course, James is all. Well, James, you know what? You brought this on yourself. You brought this on yourself.
Oh, look at Pompadou sleeping next to Frank. So cute as a puppy. Pouring one out for his homie. Okay, yeah, Chloe's not too pleased with that, I guess. Just... And of course, Elliot. He's been kicked out of Blackwell. Steph and the North Brothers. Nathan and Samantha. And there goes Chloe with her wit, of course. And there's the full blue hair. Show it off, Chloe. Nicely done. Come on, Rachel. Doing it with her left hand. <laughs> of course, you know she's ambidextrous, so. And there you go. That is Life is Strange Before the Storm, Episode 3. In a moment, we'll get to our the choices and our statistics. And then I'll sign off. All right, there it is. Here's a, here are the statistics. You told Rachel the, the truth, 49%, versus you tell you didn't tell Rachel the truth, 51%. I'm, I am surprised that it's still so evenly split between the two options. And as far as the other minor choices, 
You killed the plant with neglect, 18%, versus you killed the plant with soda at 82%. You accepted David's photograph, 90%, versus you rejected it at 10%. You didn't have Drew's money at the start of the day, 66%. You played tabletop with Mikey. How is that 2%? How is that 2%? I'm guessing it's some kind of a bug in a previous version of Before the Storm where it didn't properly register. You might have said you visited the North, North Set the Hospital. You end up playing tabletop with Mikey, but it doesn't register as that. I don't know. You didn't donate to the Firefighters Fund, 96%. You convinced Damon that Sheldon was the snitch, 55%. Actually, I'm kind of glad that uh, that one is the most popular of the options there. Because Sheldon was just a jerk to Chloe at the beginning of the, of the story. So... I was going to try and find some rhyme, but nothing works. And then Rachel met her mother, 19% versus 81% where Rachel didn't meet her. Yeah, that's... That's the reason why I chose the options I did in the conversation with Sarah. Because I knew that those would be the ones that would lead to Rachel meeting Sarah. So those are the statistics for Life is Strange Before the Storm, episode three. That hit you in the feels. Okay, so. Coming up on the next video, we'll have the bonus episode, Farewell. But until then, Redbird signing off. Thanks for watching.